Hey everybody, Amy Pottinger, and on this Messy Life Messy Kitchen, we are going to make this easy wheat night chicken bruschetta. It has bubbly brown melted mozzarella. It has a crying kid in the entryway. Why are you crying, kid? She said no. It has fresh garden tomatoes, basil from my garden, a beautiful acidic flavor, and it's just a really comforting, simple weeknight dish. I mean, I've even played it up with this prop of wine that I can't drink because it's like too early, but you know, it kind of goes with the whole flow. Um, I've had this goblet since I was 19. I bought it at Goodwill. I think I have two of them up. I used to have a whole set. Tina, you might remember these actually. Um, do you remember these? Did I live with you when I got them? There's that. So, <laughs> welcome to another messy life. Messy kitchen, messy dining room, messy living room. What else is messy? <laughs> no, use real words. Don't be a weirdo. <laughs> Who else is messy? Is daddy messy? Is mommy messy? Hey everybody, Amy Pottinger here. Welcome to another Messy Life Messy Kitchen. Uh, we're going to make a really simple weeknight meal tonight. It's just a bruschetta chicken. And, um, you know, if you've watched the show, you know that... I'm an innovator of kitchen food safety laws. Like for instance, some people might not know that you have to wash your hands after handling raw chicken. But um, you know, that's just one of those things I really, really, really like to drive home. Uh, just kidding. Okay, but seriously though, do you see how my chicken's in a totally different cutting board than my tomatoes? I'm not normally having dirty chicken fingers. But we're gonna have to move on in life because you know, the show's over and I didn't win, so we'll move on from chicken gate. But anyways, um, like I said, just really easy, beautiful weeknight dish. You're going to have like fresh summery tomatoes. I like to use more than one kind of tomato in pretty much any dish I prepare. Basil is another thing that just always makes me happy. It's so bright and vibrant. It adds a nice, slut, subtle licorice note to stuff and vinegar, olive oil, chicken. I mean, it's a pretty straightforward, but delicious and well-balanced dish. So um, let's get started, right? First thing we're gonna wanna do is heat up our pan. Um, I chose a cast iron skillet because they just heat everything so well. You get nice browns on stuff, everything cooks evenly. It makes a great transfer from the stove top to the oven, which is something that we are actually going to do. So I've preheated my oven to 350 degrees because after we brown the chicken, we're gonna pop it in the oven and finish cooking it off. So I am just going to turn my burner with my skillet on it to kind of like a medium high heat and get about two tablespoons of olive oil in there, okay? And then since I'm a lover of garlic, <laughs> we are going to cut up about three or four garlic cloves and let that brown in the pan before we add our chicken. So when you're cutting up garlic cloves, you want to get them pretty thin, pretty small. You can mince them. I also like to sliver them too, because sometimes when you sliver them, you just get this like really pretty fry on them in the pan. But um, for simplicity's sake, we are going to mince our garlic, okay? Honestly, I would be inclined to use like 10 garlic cloves, because that's me. But you know, just in case you're not like me, and no one is, <laughs> we're just going to use about three or four for the chicken. And you're actually going to need more garlic for the bruschetta as well, but um, we're just going to use three or four cloves for the chicken. So, I'm going to get that in my pan over there. And while that is browning, I'm going to go ahead and move my chicken over here. Raw chicken. I prefer chicken thighs. Um, they're juicier. They're more tender. Uh, they're slightly less lean, but not so much that it would make me not want to eat them. They're just, I find them to be way more flavorful. And they're also cheaper, so if you're looking to save some money, chicken thighs are a great way to go. So we're pretty much just going to salt these little suckers. And then we're using pepper on them. <laughs> this is not very complicated. Um, I kind of will say salt to pepper to taste on a lot of dishes because that can be an individual thing. Plus, it's kind of hard to pinpoint when you're just sitting here going like this over some chicken. So, salt and pepper to taste. Be generous, but um, you know, don't give yourself like a huge influx of sodium that's just gonna make you bloat up a lot. Who likes that? A lot. Flip my chicken, season both sides, wash my hands before I touch my salt and pepper shaker again. So, killing the germs. Killing the germs, killing the germs, not 
Anomaly, and anything else. And I'm going to dry my hands off and I'm going to resume my salt and pepper shaker. Clean hands. <laughs> Same thing, just salt and pepper to taste. And pepper. I hear a little boy's voice. What do you need, Betty? No, your sister's going to find your dog dog. Amelia locked her door so his sister cannot help him find dog dog. And no dog dog, no nap. So I am going to be right back. <laughs> okay, dog dog crisis averted. Now he can nap. So I have my olive oil cleaning up over here. My garlic is browning. You want your garlic to brown, but clearly you don't want it to burn. So uh, just give it a little stir. Once you see it browning, you can go ahead and add your chicken. After which, what are we gonna do again, guys? Touch everything before we wash our hands. If your pan's hot, you will hear that lovely sear that I have here. I have about two, two and a half pounds of boneless, skinless chicken thighs. Um, you can prepare however much you want, obviously. I'm not gonna come into your home and make those choices for you. But that's what I'm working with if you're trying to do exactly what I do. Uh, so that chicken is in there. You can hear that sizzling. Wash my hands, people. It's kind of a weird voice, isn't it? But I'm kind of a weird person. So, nice hands. What you see is what you get. That's true. Okay. Well, that's going. Um, I'm actually going to add some basil to the pan, and we're going to add some balsamic vinegar as well before we add it to the oven. But um, there's a lot of basil and bruschetta, so it's gonna be a great complement to infuse those same flavors into your chicken. So we have basil in our garden. This is about a half cup, very of loosely, very loosely packed basil, okay? Um, I have so much basil in here. We're gonna go with more basil. Um, the basil will actually fry up in the chicken fat a little bit in the oven and add a different dimension to it. So this is about half a cup of packed basil or about three quarter to a full cup of um, loosely packed basil. And of course, its volume will go down after we chop it up because that's how that works. Maybe that's not how that works, it's volume. But it's overall, <laughs> the space it takes up, okay? That's volume, right? But does it apply to chopping basil? I don't know these things. I uh, just don't. Feel free to leave your responses in the comment section because I read them. I really do. I respond to them. And uh, feel free to school me anytime you want. But yeah. Okay, chicken is cooking. Get this guy. It is not quite browning yet. So I'm going to leave that there. And we are going to talk about something with these Roma tomatoes, okay? I like to use more than one kind of tomato. And like I mentioned earlier, I have uh, grape tomatoes and I also have Roma tomatoes or plum tomatoes. These are the traditional tomatoes that you're gonna find people using, but I just like to add a little bit of flavor. If you are going to do this like the right way, you don't want everything that's on the inside of the tomato. Okay, so when I cut off my bottom, I cut it into little cubes, because you want that. This is what we're looking for. And I make sure that I discard this little, you know, little guy right here where he came off of the vine. And then what you do is you quarter your tomato like this vertically. And then we're going to look at the inside. Where's my camera? Look at the inside. All of this is going to be super, super liquidy if you leave it in. So if you're going to do this correctly, you're going to cut that out. This is how we do bruschetta, okay? You cut that out. Cut it out. Um, if you're like in a huge rush, you can cut it. That's totally fine. It's just going to have a more liquidy property. And also when I'm doing this, cause I do everything to taste with like salt and pepper and stuff, you're going to have more tomato if you're keeping this in. So you might need to think about, you know, adding more salt or pepper or something. So let's check on our friend's chicken. He is starting to brown, but 
I kind of want that to brown a little bit more. So we might as well start cutting some tomatoes here, okay? So as I mentioned earlier, I have Roma tomatoes and I have plum tomatoes. I'm going to take my bowl here and I'm just going to kind of start adding my cut up tomatoes to the bowl. So after you've done this, you kind of same shape you have at the bottom. We're just going to cut them into like little maybe quarter inch cubes. I don't know if you can really see this, so let me show you. You see that? So these are just little guys, they're nothing big. And you're going to repeat the process with all of the other tomatoes. You're just going to take a spoon, scoop that center out, violently toss it into your sink or at your kid if you're mad at them. It's a tomato, it won't hurt them, they're going to be fine. They might think you're weird, but um, I guess you could throw tomatoes at them. It might be emotionally degrading, but um, you know, they're not going to be scarred or anything. Okay, I'm guessing I can flip my chicken now. It's already fairly brown. And I'm going to walk this over and show it to you. So if you're like, don't know what's going on here, well, over here. Good bean chicken. Notice, I'm not touching it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm so scarred from that experience on Food Network that, like, I have never before in my life disclosed how often I wash my hands when cooking because I shouldn't have to because I do. But like I'm like so traumatized from this. But I'm like, look at me, I'm washing my hands. Okay. So this is probably gonna steam at you. Stinner. You can see that it's kind of browning a little bit, okay? So I'm going to return it over here, start to let it brown on the other side. And um, don't worry about there not being too much olive oil in the pan because the chicken has fat, so that's going to kind of cook off. So I'm going to add my lovely handful of fresh cut basil here. I'm going to sprinkle it into the pan. Look at that. Now it's pretty. It's pretty green in And um, I'm going to get this organized. Okay, now I'm going to grab my balsamic. Now that I've added that basil, and I'm going to get, sorry, I had to refill this guy, so that's why I had to run back. Uh, get a couple of tablespoons of balsamic vinegar in here. This will cook down and get a little bit sweet in the pan, so um, don't worry about it being like way too vinegary if vinegar is something you shy away from. Vinegar is not something I shy away from. I love really, really acidic flavors. So um, I love vinegar because it's Good job, people. Um, Let's wait for that chicken to finish browning. We're gonna pop it in the oven. And while we're doing that, I'm gonna kind of cut up all these tomatoes off camera because I'm pretty sure that doesn't fascinate you. But um, we can talk about the shape we're gonna cut these into too. These have moisture in them just like the other ones do, but I'm not gonna sit here and like spoon the center out of tiny grape tomatoes. So we just like to mimic really similar sizes when you're making like a small topping like this, like a salsa, a pico, a bruschetta, like you, you want the pieces to be the same size. So I just took this and then I cut it into eighths. So halved it, halved it again the other way, and then sliced it down the middle. So that's all I'm going to do with those. And I'm just going to kind of keep adding them to this bowl. So now that I've poured the vinegar in the chicken, it's going to kind of stop browning because I've added enough liquid that you're not going to get that direct heat that gives it that sear. So now that I've done that, you can see it's bubbling, everything's cooking. I'm going to turn my burner off, just, just for the sake of not burning ourselves. I'm going to open my oven, which has been preheated to 360, or 360, 350. Come on, people. The people, I mean me. And my French chicken is going to go in there. Um, as I mentioned, I'm going to cut all my little tomato friends up off camera, and then we're going to return. So. Uh, Hey, should I do it off camera or should I do it like, like fast forwarding? We can fast forward it. You're like, no, just do it off camera. Now that I've had this dialogue, I feel like I need to show you something. <laughs> responsible mommy. I let my children, well one's napping, but I let my child just sit and watch the tablet in her room while I do this because that's my life. I get to work it all in, in between, and she needs help with the tablet, so. Do you want to say hi? Hi. Pretty much. 
Okay, my chicken has been in the oven for about 10 minutes or so, and we also browned it before we put it in, so it's cooked both ways. It's been cooking probably about 15 minutes total. You know chicken is ready when the internal temperature reaches 165 degrees. So what we're gonna do over here, I should probably get something to put my chicken on so I don't melt my cheap ass cat in the house. There we go. Or my skillet, which is also my chicken. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm gonna take it out of the oven. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna switch my oven to broil because we are gonna cut up some fresh mozzarella and lay that on top. And since it's on broil, it's just gonna get this like beautiful brown bubbly mozzarella on top, which is just gonna be simply delicious. Um, let's see if I can. Oh, this is like a workout, dude. Okay, so you can see my chicken's like all brown and cut. I'm gonna set it there. I'll scooch everything down, including that towel. So you can see. Okay, there we go. Okay, um, we will set this aside for a second. Cheese knife. Uh, I have eight ounces of mozzarella here because that's how this fresh mozzarella came. So she said. That's what she said. Is that the joke? Yeah, that's what she said. I don't have the joke. Um, but honestly, I sincerely doubt I'll use all eight ounces of mozzarella. Um, that would be a lot for six chicken breasts or chicken thighs or whatever part of the chicken it is. You can use breasts too if you don't want to use thighs. Like I said, I prefer the thighs. I think they have more flavor and they're juicier. But um, I know people that have an aversion to them for some reason. I don't understand it. You're a lunatic. But, um, you know, I get it. I think I also might have lied to you. I might end up using a lot of this cheese. <laughs> so I'm just going to take, like, you're looking to make a little medallion that's about quarter to a half inch thick. And um, you're going to set it on top of your chicken. Or you can set it in your mouth. I do that, too. I eat a lot while I'm uh, <laughs> cooking. And then the meal's done, and I'm like, oh, full. I don't need to eat that. Uh, da, da, da. So I have like a big honking guy here, so I'm actually gonna break one of these in half and do it like that. Yeah, you know what? Between me eating a bite of this and uh, <coughs> my chicken, this is probably all gonna get used, just FYI. If you're uh, worried about calories, you can be a little less psychotically liberal with mozzarella than I am because this is honestly pretty liberal about mozzarella <laughs> for this dish. <laughs> You could definitely, definitely get away with using less. But why would you lose the... Why would you lose... Lose. I lost the show. It's, it's in those little Freudian slips coming out. Why would you use less when you can use more? That's what my fat cells say when they continue to multiply and grow on my ass. Right. This is going back to the oven. As mentioned, it's on broil. It's on high broil. So that'll just kind of go pretty quickly. We are going to start our bruschetta topping. We have chopped up all of these tomatoes. See, there's little guys. And um, as always, I want to find my knife that I want. Uh, no more cheese knife, I'm gonna the cheese knife. I have some garlic browning in the pan. So first thing I'm gonna do, add about one, two tablespoons of olive oil, then I'm gonna, totally unrelated to this recipe, say, quiet, quiet, Becca, stop it, stop it. It's my dog. I don't think David Beckham is in my living room. We are kinda kinda want a deep pan so you can stir stuff around. Um, this is kind of like Calphalon's version of a wok. It's not like really a wok, but whatever. More of our garlic. There's about four or five cloves of garlic here. I'm going to just give that. Do you want to come say hi? Come here. Come here. Sit. There's my dog. You're very handsome. I have nothing for you. Thank you for coming by to visit. Bye. See you later. Have a good day. Don't forget to get your parking validated. Oh, the other one's here now, too. He thinks that I'll sit. They think I have something for them. The truth is, I have nothing for them, but chastising words. Because I'm mean. I'm not mean. Okay, chopping up my garlic. You can do like a super, super like fresh bruschetta where you don't cook your tomatoes. I'm not gonna cook them very long. I'm honestly gonna cook my tomatoes for about three or four minutes. But I do that because it um, kind of breaks down the enzymes in the tomatoes a little bit and alters their texture. But it also allows these flavors to really cook together. So you're gonna have a really cohesive 
flavor profile where these all just, you know, like everything makes sense. So as that is browning, I'm going to see how my chicken's doing. You can't see it, I'll show you. It's melting, but it's definitely not like doing that like, like amazing cheesy bubble you wanna see like on top of pizzas and stuff, or like a Mexican casserole. Okay, so the tomatoes are cut up, garlic is browning. I use this sister my chicken, so I'm not gonna use it again. You almost got me, people. Oh, let's see here. This seems nice and blue. Right, garlic. Smell my oven. Not quite, still melting and bubbling. Well, that's browning. We are going to chop up more basil. I like like a good amount of basil in my bruschetta. That thing like totally shifted, didn't it? My camera. Shimmy, shimmy. Shimmy, shimmy, cocoa puff. Shimmy, shimmy, yeah. I can shimmy as a cheerleader in high school. There's my shimmy. <laughs> oh, and this like is bouncy. So is my fat. Okay. Um, basil. We're going to chop you up. Well, my garlic is browning. Good, decent chop on that. I like to save a couple leaves for the top to garnish with. And um, we're making a ton of bruschetta. I, my husband's out of town, so I don't eat a lot of carbs when he's out of town. So like, even though this isn't like your traditional side of roasted vegetables, I mean, it's it's tomatoes, so it's my it's my side. I'm basically making my sauce my side. Plus I love sauce. So, uh, here's some boots. Okay, I can smell my garlic. It is browning. To add this obscene amount of tomatoes. Dude, that smells like Niagara Falls over there. Like, that's not quiet. That was the initial noise of all of the water for the tomatoes going ah, with the olive oil. Because that happens. Um, they, they make noises like that apparently. So I have like three or four, four or five cloves of garlic in there, all those tomatoes, and I will get into this like in my blog post. So it's not all those tomatoes. If you haven't like written down what's going on, just read the full blog post. Anyway. Couple tablespoons, of, couple tablespoons of olive oil, brown our garlic, add our tomatoes, balsamic. Okay? I'm gonna add, let's say, one tablespoon, two tablespoons balsamic. And I like to keep the temperature pretty high in my pan because um, we want some of this liquid to cook down quickly, but we're not looking to sit here and stew the tomatoes forever. So um, I add like everything kind of right off the bat because I don't want to cook it too long, but I want those flavors to have a little bit of time to cook together. So here is my basil. And I'm gonna check out my chicken again, because it was like silly, silly close last time. Oh, you guys, it's exciting. I'm literally gonna give it like 30 more seconds. Um, I'm going to actually measure out. Are you gonna do this? Salt and pepper on this one um, because this is like different, so it's not like I'm just sprinkling it on chicken. So, excuse please, my super classy, well staged giant thing of salt. So, let's go with one, two tablespoons salt, and I'm going to do oh, wait, so those are each half teaspoons. Do not, do not put two tablespoons of salt in this, you're gonna be a sad person. That was one. That was one teaspoon of salt. I just want to throw that out there. Um, we're gonna go with half a teaspoon of red pepper flakes, and just for entertainment purposes, let's get some pepper in there. Nothing like Kirkland Signature Costco pepper. So one tablespoon of pepper. Now I might add more to that because I have to taste my food, but I feel like that's gonna be. We're like we're like on the right track here, people. See, you get to learn with me. I may not be like 
super professional here, but um, I mean, this is what you'd be doing if you were cooking from scratch. Just being like, oh, one more tablespoon, half a tablespoon, wash your chicken hands. I don't feel like people really need to, that might be something good, you know. Okay, I know my chicken's gonna be ready because it was so close last time. So, turn this off. It's so brown. I'm like afraid of it too, this out right now. I'm gonna get a second oven mitt just for fun. Look, it's its twin. Can you see that? Can you see that beautiful, beautiful brown mozzarella? I can. Look, I'm gonna make it pretty. Bye. Sprinkling some fresh basil on it so I can take an acceptable picture of it. Because we eat with our eyes. We fall in love with our eyes too, but you stay in love if the person you love isn't a douchebag. Isn't that nice? And that's how I've been married 10 years. <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to give this a stir. And then I'm going to taste it in theory. I feel like that's something I should also be able to execute. I'm gonna blow on it. Because as much as I would love to burn my mouth, I'm actually not really into that whole masochism thing, so I think I'm gonna keep my mouth unburned. Sometimes I wonder if I'm a genius. It's per I'm not even gonna change that. That's good. That's done, people. That is bruschetta. Uh, it's slightly spicy. I love it. But you could put in a quarter tablespoon of red pepper flakes if you don't want it too spicy. Um, I have chicken on my shirt. <laughs> One more time, look at this lovely chicken. Okay, and then we're just gonna take it. And here's the thing, like I said, you can um, you can put this over a pasta. I don't eat that much like pasta when my husband's out of town. He has like an insane metabolism that is like ridiculously unfair. I know I've mentioned it before, but it's because I still can't get over how jealous I am about it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like I'm probably honestly just gonna eat this with chicken and tomatoes. But you could put it over pasta, you could um, like get a bread to dip it in, um, you could put it over other roasted vegetables. What's going on with my shirt, people? It's like, it's like a lopsided? Whatever. Um, <laughs> welcome to my mind. You can do all sorts of stuff with it, but yeah, I'm pretty much just gonna eat chicken and tomatoes. I mean, you can see that this is, like this is a decent amount, enough that you can put pasta with it. See, it's just, um, there's enough that you can put pasta with this. So, uh, welcome and bye. I guess that's the opposite of welcome. We did another messy life, messy kitchen. Easy, like two pan, weeknight dish. Chicken bruschetta, you can put it with noodles. I don't know if I've mentioned that as many times as I meant to in the last 10 seconds. So just for fun, we'll mention it again. Except for like, I know I've mentioned it an insane amount of times. Um, spay and neuter your dogs. Spay and neuter your pets. That's what Bob Barker said. Whatever. Spay and neuter your pets, wash your chicken hands, and uh, have a lovely day. Is mommy messy? Use real words. Is daddy messy? Is shooter messy? Who else is messy? Is your brother messy? Yeah. And, and when you were going downstairs, I saw my brother come out of his room. Mom. Again? How many times do we have to put that kid down for a nap? 100. 100. Hey, you want to try some chicken? Come on, goofball. Try some chicken. And I'll try it. <laughs> Get a nice, beautiful bite in there with that melted cheese, your tomatoes, some fresh basil. 
You like fresh basil. I make this face every time she talks like that, and she still thinks it's funny. <laughs> hey, who raised you? So am I responsible for this? Is this my fault? No, whose fault is it? Dad, dad. How's your daddy's fault? It's daddy and Tudor's fault. It's daddy and Tudor's fault. Well, at least I am void of any responsibility. So, thanks for stopping by. Bye-bye. Thanks for